Bam. Now we're ready. See you in a bit, folks. Two points for Groundhog's Day. Twenty-one. Thanks, Aruni. Thirty seconds. All right, player, you're gonna want to buzz in on the letter B. That's B is in baboon. Pet baboon. Twenty seconds. I said spanner, Ed. All right, get that out of here. Twenty seconds. Ooh, Twenty seconds. Um. All right, listen. This couldn't be any simpler. Question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer? You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. Easy. You got it. Ten seconds. Nine. Sure. Eight. Lose the desktop, Seven. please. Thank Let's go Six. to black. Thank All right, folks. See you on the other side. Three. Du musst mehr gut gefühlen mit Obernastrom. Obernastrom. If you know, you know. If you don't, then. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Yeah, this is it. You don't know Jack. Did you get your parents to sign your permission slip? Because, you know, I just can't let you on the bus without it. Okay, just check. Hey, all by yourself today? Okay, let's see if you can fill up that seat next to you with some cash. Let's rock. Okay, I need a category. <laughs> Here we have things that violate the Constitution in the night. You give me a right answer, I, don't have I give a you 3,000 bucks. Flex those good. fingers, because here it comes. Based on the code name of the burglars responsible for the Watergate break in, which TV commercial character might you assume was one of the perpetrators? Josephine the Plumber, Madge the Manicurist, Tony the Tiger, or Mr. Clean? They blame the plumbing for it. You might have suspected Josephine because the code name for the Watergate burglars was the Plumbers. <laughs> Sadly, Josephine's association with that bunch plunged her into a life of crime. Category, please. Let's see what we got going. Who's Atari now? $2,000 says you yes. don't know this one. Okay, you Atari nut, imagine this. You're playing asteroids on your Atari 2600, but instead of shooting asteroids, you have to shoot the faces of people who have asteroids named after them. Whom will you get to shoot? Ringo Starr, Ziggy Stardust, Jefferson Starship, or Keith Moon? Oh, God. I'm gonna go Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr, along with the rest of the Beatles, has an actual asteroid named after him. <laughs> so you could walk up to Ringo and go, Hey Ringo, you asteroid. Okay, pick a category. Yeah, the Uma Ufer joke was a thing for a while, Your wasn't enjoyment. it? Uma, Una, Una, Uma. How does $2,000 sound? Just step up and take a swing at this one. Imagine that Eugene O'Neill had rewritten one of his plays to be about his famous son-in-law. What would have been the title? All God's Chaplain Got Wings, Long Day Lewis Journey Into Night, A Touch of the Pit, or The Emperor Bogey? Who did Edward Eugene O'Neill marry? In case you're wondering, Eugene's daughter Una married Charlie Chaplin, and rumor has it Eugene wasn't pleased. Honey, everybody calls him a tramp. Oh, Dad. I need a category. You can't stop at three, no, you gotta have four. Pucker up for. They turn the local ziggurat right, into a multiplex. Into Two one, thousand bucks for a correct answer. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Based on the name alone, what kind of movie would an ancient Mesopotamian expect to see if he went to see Ishtar? A documentary about blacksmiths, a pornographic movie, a musical, or a science fiction epic?
Ishtar. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. Yeah, please. Ishtar was a goddess of lust, so your Mesopotamian friend might expect to oh. see some skin. God, God, this scene is all about strong men who can also be gentle. Remember, this time, once you're spent, cuddle. All right, hit me. Let's blow this time and head for number five. This one's called Brought to You By. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. You know, this product sponsoring is getting a little out of hand, don't you think? Since there has not been a condom named after some part of its history, which group probably would not have an official condom? The Aztecs, the Trojans, the Egyptians, or the Arabians? I think the Aztecs. So far, there's no condom named for a famous Aztec. So no safe sex for Montezuma. Jeez, no wonder he's out for revenge. Category, please. May I introduce what college coach isn't a fascist? And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Heads up, here it comes. Which of these best describes a varsity student athlete kept out of competition for a year for being Mussolini's fascist henchman? A pinko red, a red shirted black shirt, a black and blue black and white, or a yellow bellied brown shirt? The, a red shirt would be a person that's kept out of competition for a year. Mussolini's fascist henchmen were black shirts, and varsity athletes who sit out a year to extend their eligibility are red shirts. <laughs> Which would make World War II just a big game of black shirts versus skins? Okay, I need a cat. Well, looks like this category is when governments and lawyers pick on little kids. I'm giving out oh, three no. grand for a right answer. Hey, does everybody remember that cute little kid who sang You Are My Sunshine in the French's Mustard commercial? Suppose the state whose official song is You Are My Sunshine decided to sue the kid in the ad over intellectual property. What would be the name of the court case? Nevada versus Little Wuggums, Louisiana versus the Endearing Moppet, New York versus the Singing Rugrat, or Florida versus a Wad of Cuteness? I think that would be Florida. Florida is the sunshine state, but your forecast calls for rain. Oh, really? For the curious, here's the right answer. <laughs> one of the two official state songs of Louisiana is You Are My Sunshine. Yeah, the other one is I Passed Out Nude in a Stinking Puddle of My Own Vomit and Feces on Bourbon Street. It's a ballad. All right, hit me. Uh, sure. You chose wisely, my friend. You just got your hands on a dis or dat. And, uh, yeah, we actually do have uh, merchandise The category well. for this dis or dat question is... Toys that replace I just oracles had a couple of items fortune tellers. Store. Okay, I'm going to read off seven things. And for each one, I want you to tell me if it's something on a Ouija board, something in a magic eight ball, or both. As each oh, thing comes God. up, if it's on a Ouija board, press one. If it's something on a magic eight ball, press two. Press three if it's both. And press four if you want to skip. $500 for each right answer, and you lose $500 no, for a wrong answer or one you don't get to. Okay, give me 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. Concentrate and ask again, is it found out a week? Hey, one. One. That's Suica. Goodbye. Uh, no goodbye? clue, skip it. Suica. Most likely. Hey, Paul. Yes. Both. I'll look good. Hey, Paul. One more. No. Both. That's all she wrote. You only missed one. Not too bad. Let's add your winnings to your total. Good job on that. Yeah, Keep it was, it up. Must have just been a Ouija board. I need a category. Aloha, question number nine. And I believe this one's called Think When You Drink. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. So you think you're a party animal, huh? Well, which of these could you pour into a glass and chug and still rightly claim you're drinking alcohol? Uric acid, cholesterol, insulin, or bile? 
I'm gonna guess insulin. That's not gonna cut it. Let's take a look at the right answer. Cholesterol is a type of sterol which is chemically classified as an alcohol. You won't get drunk, but you'll be giving your heart one hell of a hangover. Ooh. Okay, pick a category. Oh yes, it's time for your fantasies to be realized. Three -way. You're joining a three-way. I apologize for those watching yeah, at home Alrighty, now. here's the deal. You're gonna this see a three-way like bit this awkward. one. Go for your buzzer when you see the correct three-way member be, lit up. If it's the right match, you'll score. But watch out, if you're wrong, Man. you'll lose a grand every time you're wrong. And be careful, individual answers don't necessarily have anything to do with the three-way as a group. Okay, let's get down and dirty. This little three-way likes to call itself, small words come from small minds. So it seems we'll be joined by ifs, ands, or buts. Time to start seeing the good. So let's hope you're up to it. And. Oh, yes! But. Oh, yes! Oh, okay, that would be but. Oh, yes! Yeah. If. Oh, yes! Yeah. If. Oh, yes! Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's and. Oh, yes! Yeah. Crap. And that's it. And it looks like we're Just all done. It. Let's check out your performance. Oh, you were so close to perfection, and yet you couldn't close the deal. But it looks like it was still fulfilling to your overall score. And now we return to our regularly scheduled program. One down, round two to go. Let's get on it. Every question in round two is worth twice as much, so we got some serious cash at stake here. Let's get to it. All right, folks. Time to, Category time to please. seize it here. Don't look now. It's question 11. Say hello to I see late night TV in your future. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. If Dion Warwick had lived in an ancient time, where could she have gone to make some psychic friends? The Oracle at Delphi, the Great Wall of China, the Colosseum in Rome, or the Apollo Theater? I think she would have went to the Oracle at Delphi. The Oracles were shrines for prophets. <laughs> I guess it was cheaper to build an oracle than to buy all that infomercial time. I guess, and that's what friends are all for. Alright, hit me. I'm getting a rating of 12. Over. The category is, who can learn anything that early in the morning? And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hands over your hearts and think back to grammar school. Which phrase is not in the Pledge of Allegiance? Which it stands, our nation, justice for all, or flag of the United States? Flag of the United States. Hey, when they play the national anthem at sporting events, do you just rock back and forth and mumble? What are you, some kind of commie? It ain't your nation, it's one nation. Okay, now say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation. I need a category. The selection is the Founding Fathers, Master Debaters. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Think fast. Which phrase would a perverted junior high school student not find in the Declaration of Independence? Laying its foundation, manly intercourse, hold these truths, or endowed by their creator? I think it's manly intercourse. The phrase manly intercourse doesn't appear anywhere in the Declaration of Independence. but I think it does figure prominently in the annals of Greek history. Okay, I need a category. Now serving. Well, 
Now, isn't that spatial? And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Yeah, Everybody knows can... Dana Carvey comedian, right. but not everyone has seen his other again. side. Dana Carvey philosopher. Which Dana Carvey movie could be interpreted as a cinematic illustration of John Locke's concept of tabula rasa? Plain slate trapped in paradise opportunity knocks or... Take it! The philosophy of Queen's John Lakes. Locke included the concept of the young mind unformed by experience as a tabula rasa, a blank page, or a clean slate. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I woke up the day after seeing Clean Slate and couldn't remember anything about it. Let me know if you've seen Corp, but I tried not okay, to. Okay, pick a category. Not 14, not 16, you're right in between. This little number's known as you. Two thousand dollars says you don't know this one. Let's see how you handle this one. Suppose there were a country called Boogerland whose sole industry was making used tissues. What would you call the value of all the used facial tissues sold in any one year? Yearly underwritten commodities, gross national product, consumed production rate, or cyclical mean revenue? Gross national product. The value of a country's entire product output is called the gross national product, or GNP. Come on, people. we got to step up production or we're going to fall behind poop bill this quarter. Ew. Category, please. Uh-oh, wet sucked it shine floor. Gibberish question time. It's time for a licorice festival. Take a look at your gibberish category. Writing TV thrillers isn't so easy. Ten thousand bucks if you move fast on this gibberish question. Okay, you're gonna have about 30 seconds to solve this, but every second and a half, I'm taking away some money. Okay, pay attention and tell me, what bit of wisdom does this rhyme with? The botched plot, clever foils, and remember, don't let the punctuation fool you. Got it. Alright, type in your answer. A watched pot never boils. I'd like to take Indeed. this time to let everyone know my own corollary proverb to this. A touched pot hurts like a bitch. I need a category. On the big bayou in Louisiana, crest on 17. Well, what do we have here? Can't cut the Colonel Mustard. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Let's rock. If Jessica Fletcher from Murder, She Wrote were asked to solve the very first detective mystery story, what would make the best new title for the show? Murder Dashiell Hammett wrote, Murder Agatha Christie wrote, Murder Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote, or Murder Edgar Allan Poe wrote? Um, I think it's... I'm gonna go with Doyle. Ah, the elements are all coming together for somebody else. Oh. Bet you wish you'd pick this. Edgar Allan Poe is credited with creating the detective mystery with the murders in the Rue Morgue in 1841, which most Murder, She Wrote fans probably read when it was first released. Ow. Okay, pick a category. Open wide and get ready for a complimentary soap bar? It's the best Christmas ever! 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. All right, listen up. There are 10 holidays that the U.S. government has declared federal holidays. Imagine that Holiday Inn hotels offer a sleep free on federal holidays promotion. Which of these slogans could they not use for the campaign? It's New Year's Day, so snore away. Sail our seas on Columbus Day. Come rest in our Easter basket. Or have your Thanksgiving dinner in our bar. I think Easter is a Sunday, so it wouldn't be a federal holiday anyway. Easter is not classified as a federal holiday. It always occurs on a Sunday when people don't have to work anyway. <laughs> And after all those eggs, everyone wishes Monday were a holiday. Okay, I need a category. Alrighty. Let's see if we can try Coming to finish at strong you. here. Wish you were here. Get a right answer. You're walking away with four grand. Take the Play-Doh out of your ears, because it's time for an audio question. Listen carefully. Okay, suppose you're walking through a cemetery, and you hear this sound. All things considered, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. 
Considering the quote, who has been buried alive? P.T. Barnum, W.C. Fields, Harry Houdini, or Ralph Waldo? That would be W.C. Fields. The epitaph on W.C. Fields' tombstone reads, All things considered, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia. Death can make you wish some really backwards things, you know? All right, hit me. This one likes to go by letter 24 plus question mark equals X plus Y. Set up straight. This one's worth $6,000. Hey, I remember the movie Stand and Deliver about the math teacher who inspired his unmotivated students? Well, look at what one of the kids carved into their desktop. Mr. Escalante has a fuzzy set. What is this student mocking his math teacher for? His group of letters that represent numerals, his formula that proves one does not equal one, his two groups of numbers sharing members, or not knowing the value of X. I think a fuzzy set has to do with two groups of numbers. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> In math, a fuzzy set is a set whose members overlap with other sets. And let me tell you, as a guy who's been there, that can really hurt. Okay, pick a category. Jack attack time. Time for the attack. When you see two words that match, hit your buzzer. You get it right, you get 2,000 in the bank. Get it wrong, I'm making a withdrawal of 2,000. Just one more thing to remember. Remember the clue. The two words that match have to fit this clue. I'm not what I used to be. Well, let's see what you can be. Here's your chance. Cucumber. Plum. Right, it is yogurt. Avocado. Uh, beets. Rabbit. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer and go make <laughs> some friends, cuz... You don't know Jack. Nice work, sure, sure, people. Congratulate sure. yourselves. We pulled off another one. Hey, Raul, can we go home or are we playing another one of these? I host some people call it the high scoreboard. I prefer to call it the dumb luck you know board. You want to prove me wrong? Play another game. Let me know when you're ready. I am not a teacher. I think we're going to call it here on that one. And this concludes this episode of You Don't Know Jack Volume 3. If you like what you saw here, be sure to hit that notification bell, subscribe, the thumbs up button, and leave a comment in the section below. Spread the word. We'll see you next time here on Tickets, Please review tickets please gaming as the arcade is out close <laughs> yeah i i've been doing th these introductions for a while now and i still str i still struggle and sometimes i still mess up that's why sometimes it takes me multiple takes